Okay, gang. So, now we're on to our last mechanism in carboxylic acids. And this is where we're going to take carboxylic acids and we're going to form a functional group called an amide. Right? Now look, I know grammatically, you know, it, you want to pronounce, you would maybe want to pronounce that amide. In the outcome world, it's amide. Make sure you say it right. Okay. Sorry, that wasn't like an ultimatum. I just want to make sure you know we're walking the walk and talking the talk. Okay. So, what's kind of the word formula? All right, so we're going to take a carboxylic acid, no surprise there, right? That's the series. And we're going to toss in an amine. And this is going to be like one of our first times working with amines, but don't worry, we'll get really well acquainted with them in one of the next coming series all about amines. And if we have this combination, we will form an amide. So let me kind of throw a reaction up for you. Again, I'm just going to use my generic two carbon carboxylic acid, good old trusty uh, acetic acid. And then I'm just going to throw in, for you Breaking Bad fans, methylamine, right? Or methylamine, right? And that's, you know, one of the things Walter White uses to get his operation going. Good, uh, good chemical for him. Okay, so if we have this, then we will form this amide. So if you want to think about it, amides are kind of like esters, but with an oxygen, or sorry, with a nitrogen, not an oxygen, as opposed to an oxygen. That's what I meant to say. Okay, so here's kind of the interesting thing. As opposed to the mechanisms we've done with esters and uh, acid anhydrides, amines are basic. So you can't do this in an acidic environment because they are bases. So You'll kind of see how this goes, but the mechanism is actually shorter, which is a good thing. So let me draw my squiggly line. Okay, so let's get at it. So, again, like I said, we're not in an acidic environment because amines are basic, right? You can't have both acid and blue. You know what I mean? You can't have an overwhelming supply of H plus when you have a lot of base around. So what you're going to do is you're just going to skip the protonation step and just straight up attack the carbonyl with our nucleophile. Right, so let's do that. Methylamine is chilling. He sees acetic acid. He's going to go in. This is the addition part of the addition elimination step. We're going to attack our carbonyl carbon. Electrons kick up onto oxygen. Right, I didn't touch the OH going uh, down to the bottom right. I now have an O minus going up to the top left. And I'm going to draw the methylamine part going up and to the right. So remember, nitrogen is directly attached to the carbon. I have these two hydrogens floating around down here. And a CH3 right here. And nitrogen was neutral, donated his bond, or his electron pair to make a bond. He now has a positive charge. Okay, so this might look a little funky, but like I said, we can't just draw H+, right? So we need to still kind of give this OH a positive charge to make him a better leaving group, and we obviously want to deprotonate our nitrogen to make sure he stays around, right? So here's kind of what you're going to have to do. Do an intramolecular uh, acid-base reaction. Have this OH grab the, one of the hydrogens off of nitrogen, right? So the OH, this oxygen is going to grab that proton, electrons, go on to nitrogen. Don't worry, you can totally do that. Okay. Didn't touch the O minus. Right? I now have the OH2. I have water down to the right. And now I have my nitrogen piece all good to go. He's now deprotonated up and to the right. Hydrogen and a CH3. Okay. Right? We have the tetrahedral intermediate. We've kind of shifted protons the way we need to. Now let's collapse the tetrahedral intermediate. Let's swing these electrons down, right? And who gets ejected, right? Our good leaving group, which in this case is water. So let's eject him. Draw the arrow this way, and draw the result down here. So remember, we reformed the double bond, double bonded oxygen down there. So now, right, we kicked off water, so I'm gonna draw my nitrogen going down to the right. He's a nitrogen, I'm going to draw just the hydrogen right down below him. Don't worry, they're bonded. He has a lone pair that I did not draw up here, but I'm just going to be explicit. It's there. And the CH3 is right there. And we also produce water. So yet again, 
it is a condensation reaction. Okay, gang, that does it for all the mechanisms associated with transforming carboxylic acids into other things, such as uh, acid halides, right? Such as acid chlorides, acid bromides, um, esters, and uh, acid anhydrides, and in this case, amides. Okay, so that pretty much wraps it up for carboxylic acids, everybody. Now, moving forward into the next series, we're going to take a look at the functional groups I just mentioned, because there's a lot of chemistry to do with those uh, functional groups, but as you'll see, it's nothing really new. We're just kind of going to apply what we know in different scenarios. See you guys later.